Today's species spotlight is the last of three different subspecies that I have talked about in depth in several other videos that I absolutely love, and that is the black pine snake. So the black pine snake is one of three subspecies of Pituophis melanoleucus, the pine snake, the other two of which being the southern or Florida pine snake, and then the other one is the northern pine snake. So Pituophis is the genus, melanoleucus is the species, and then the black, the northern, and then the southern are the three species. There is an additional one called the Louisiana pine snake that is has been its own species for a very long time and is actually one of the rarest snakes in North America. The black pine snake is also an endangered species, uh, very similar to the Louisiana. Now these guys have a very limited range, unfortunately. They're only found in the very southernmost tips of Alabama and Mississippi, as well as the farthest east part of Louisiana, and then the farthest west part of the Panhandle of Florida. It's a very, very small, isolated little range, and they rely on very specialized habitat. So that means that the habitats that they can occupy in that small range are even more depleted. It really stinks, unfortunately. Now, these guys being part of the pine snake family and Pituophis in general have a bunch of really cool adaptations and cool physical characteristics. So the first off is you can tell that they are fairly heavy bodied for North American colubrids. Normally we think of like rat snakes and corn snakes that are a lot more slender body. These guys are pretty hefty. They only average about four and a half to five feet long and they have keeled scales. So similar to the bull snakes and even rattlesnakes, when you look at their scales, they're not smooth. They have an extra ridge that kind of pops up just a little bit, which add, which gives them kind of a bit of a rough texture and keeled scales are actually better at water retention as well. So that's where you see a lot of the more like desert type species have the keeled scales. And then the most extreme example, they have like little beveled little like armor links like the Gila monsters, the Angolan pythons that are the best for water retention. So it goes kind of like the smooth scales and then the colubrid scales and then the keeled scales and then the really cool like armored beveled scales of the Angolans and the Gila monsters. Now these guys in all pits but the pine snakes especially have really large rostral scales which are the scales right on the top of their nose on the top of their heads and that's to aid in burrowing. Pine snakes in general are very avid burrowers. They spend a lot of time underground. They also have modified epiglottis. So that's that little tube that a snake has when you ever see them open up their mouth to yawn or to hiss at you because they're grumpy or because you won't leave them alone. That's the epiglottis. They have a modified shape one that allows them to have air pass through it more efficiently in a different way that gives them that very iconic, very intimidating, loud hiss, which is a defense posture. They also are constrictors, like a lot of other species of snake, although, as mentioned before, they spend a lot of time underground, there isn't a whole lot of room in rodent burrows and in small tunnels to actually grab and wrap around a prey item, usually small mammals. So what they do instead is actually use their very large, muscular bodies and actually press the prey against the sides of the burrows, which sounds absolutely terrible out loud. Sorry, flies again. Um, but that is in fact one hunting method that they use as well as other uh, underground and sem and terrestrial and semi-fossorial. I know the arboreal and fossorial terms get thrown around quite a bit, but the black pine snakes do spend a large majority of their time underground. And that is one adaptation and hunting method that they in fact do use. Now, as I said before, that they are pretty big snakes. It's a heavy bodied, solid black snake that can get almost five feet long, but they aren't seen that often in the wild, even for people who are actually working on conservation efforts and are specifically looking for these guys. And that's because they spend so much time underground. Adults, often you find them in old root systems, completely buried underground, and then small ones are often found in rodent burrows. But either way, they're still underground very often. And then being a subtropical reptile, so not found right near the equator where it's just warm kind of constantly, they do go through periods of brumation. And then in the area where it's at, even though it is that, you know, kind of swampy south kind of, you know, I don't want to paint a negative picture about um, the area where they live in because it is really cool but it still does get pretty cold for extended periods of time, so they do have a period of brumation as well. So it's even less time that they're able to be seen, unfortunately. 
Now, when you look at them, you can tell the most notable thing about them is they are solid black and then all the other fun, cool Pituophis features. Now, when they're born, a lot of times they're actually not that dark. They look very similar to other pine snakes, if not a little bit darker. So they kind of have those classic uh, blotches and saddles and banding. And then as they get older, very similar to the way that IMGs and black milk snakes do as they get older, as they shed, they get darker and darker and darker. Not all of them are 100% black, and even you can tell the two boys that I have, because I like to get boys and pairs are hard, um, that you can tell there's even a little bit of uh, brown and banning remaining on the boys. Now, if you guys decide that you want to, in fact, purchase one and have one as a pet, then you actually have to find one in state because they are an endangered species. They've been listed as threatened for a very long time, just like the Louisiana pine snake, just like the Eastern indigos. So you either have to find a breeder in state or you have to find one who has and will help you through the process through an interstate commerce permit that is a whole thing that has to go through U.S. Fish and Wildlife that will allow you to actually transport those across state lines because being the endangered species. Really cool species of snake. Unfortunately, because of, you know, human encroachment, deforestation, as well as modern fire prevention. So we've all heard about how, you know, forest fires are a natural part of the ecosystem that they are required for good renewal, growth, and other types of life. And a lot of that does have to do with the different types of the earth systems and the other plants and animals that grow back from rejuvenated fire from burns. And the black pine snake is one of those species. So we're dealing with an animal that already has a very specialized habitat in a very small range that can only live in very certain soil ecosystems that can only live in old growth, long leaf pine forests. And then the areas that are best for them because of fire prevention, because where they're near human habitation now, those fires don't have an opportunity to actually extend out and do their thing that they would on their own, preventing the range of spread for their habitats. So now because of all those key factors, there's actually less than 5% of their original range left. It stinks. But it is one that people are aware of and they are making efforts to in fact, uh, captive breed them in larger numbers. For a very long time, pine snakes in general, and specifically the black pine snake, seemed to be one that only really occupied very certain narrow, small niches of the reptile community. But it, maybe just because I'm around more people, it seems like more are aware and more people are working with black pines as well as the other ones. Really, really cool species of snake. Now, seeing where they sit in their range, they actually have integrated with other species of pine snakes, including the Southern and Louisiana. And most recently, here's a really cool picture where they found one where it's almost a straight 50-50 split of the black pine snake, the Pituophis melanolucus lodgini, and then the other half being the Southern pine snake, Pituophis melanolucus uh, mugatus which is really, really cool. Like that's something you don't really see often. A lot of times you see them where they're kind of blended together or they get kind of like this weird like hybridized mix where they almost look like, say if it's a bull snake, um, where it looks darker and the saddles and things are a little bit larger and wider. Um, and then like the rostral scale and the head shape is a little bit different, but this is almost exactly just straight hurt, black, hurt, Southern. It's just really, really funny. Really, really cool species of snake. They can be a little feisty at times, but honestly, that's why I like them a lot. So if you're looking for an animal, uh, working with a species of snake that doesn't just kind of hang out, that's very placid, that can be super workable, that can be personable and is fun to interact with, but usually sometimes has a bit more of a spicy personality, definitely go with the black pines or other species of pitchwofus in general. There was this old thing, and I've talked about it before, where when I was very first getting into them, one breeder told me that it seemed like as you went further down in the range of Pituophis, the spicier they would get. So you had the Northerns that usually seem to be super chill as long as with the bull snakes because they also reach pretty far north. And then you get down to the Blacks and the Louisianas where they get more grumpy. And then you move down to the Southerns and then some of the Mexican pine snakes, they're just the worst. Well, I can tell you with the some that I have, the bull snake that I have for educational purposes that was given to me, super placid, amazing. The, my Two of my Northern pine snakes, absolutely amazing. My female Louisiana, absolutely amazing. Her boyfriend, heck no. Then I just recently received a pair of Northern Pine Snakes. Both of them are jerks. 
and the Black Pines are also jerks. So maybe not too much credence on that. There's a whole lot of individualism that does go into all animal species in general. But with that being said, yeah. Um, hope you guys did enjoy this video. I always love talking about species that not only do I am very interested in, but I also do own and enjoy working with. It gives me a little bit, probably a little bit more of an animated feel to them. That being said, God, <laughs> I just can't stop. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. If you want to check out the whole playlist of Species Spotlight, it's right here. Please like and subscribe if you can. It really helps me out. Um, if you guys want to see other different species talked about or other video ideas, please let me know down in the comments. You can always email me, um, Facebook, Instagram, all that jazz. I try to do TikTok, but I really just can't keep up on it. I just, I'm just really bad about it in general. Um, if you feel like you want to support me a little bit more, I do have my Patreon. I have several different reward levels, all the way from starting at a dollar and building up. And there's multiple different rewards, including t-shirts, although this is not one of mine, um, including t-shirts, wristbands, stickers, online tours, and things like that. So again, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Hope everyone's having a great day, and we'll check you next time.